<coughs> Excuse me. I am coming down with some sort of sickness. It started this weekend, and uh, I'm just crossing my fingers that it's not some sort of like a fever or anything like that. But if it were a fever, I know the cure that I would need, and that's more Kasai in my life, because here's the thing. I have fallen back in love with Kasai, this time in Classic Constructed, and uh, she showed up and showed out here on this first weekend, the release weekend of Heavy Hitters, and she wasn't the only Heavy Hitters heroes that did so. So today we're going to talk about three Heavy Hitters heroes that showed up on the weekend and put down some results. Is this the best set we've ever had? Is this the most fun we've ever had? And is the answer to both of those questions yes? I don't know. Let's talk about it. Starting with Kasai. Kasai showed up in two different top eights in two different parts of the world and technically in two different variants. Variants. So let's look at the first one from Battle Hardened PTI Manila. This is Andre C's second place list at the PTI in Manila. Uh, it looks very similar to a lot of other lists that uh, are running this more mid range and aggro play style. So if we kind of take a look at what the overall game plan is. The goal for Kasai here in this mid-range aggro game plan is to be swinging our weapons twice and to be at the moment we can really threatening the uh, the weapon attacks for hitting and then threatening the gold generation off of her effect. So the moment that you get those two yellows and two reds and you can start putting together turns where you can threaten creating a gold token and snowballing the game, you do so. Uh, you're wanting to get value off of your equipment pieces, so Valiant Dynamo and uh, Grains of Blood Spill. Valiant Dynamo allows you to block extra times if you swing your weapon. And then Grains of Blood Spill is just fantastic. This is one of my favorite cards from this set because it just lets you roll over your resources onto the next turn. Now, construction-wise, there's a couple of points I think that are really important to look at with regards to a Kasai list. How many go again enablers do you have for your blades and we have nine blade runner included in that count we want to also count spoils of war because it gives go again to our swords and then when you jump down here you look at run through you look at glint the quicksilver hit and run technically and also precision press technically so when you count that all up we've got three six nine twelve uh, 15 plus 9 is 24 24 ways to give our swords go again and that feels Pretty solid, pretty good. Now, the other thing I look for are uh, either whether or not you're leaning into the copper generation so that you can play a card like Blood on Her Hands, which, spoiler alert, was my spoiler card from the Everfest set. Oh, oh, throwback right there. Uh, whether or not you're leaning heavily into that with inclusions of Outland Skirmish, and particularly if you want to include the blues, and this list does not include the blues, and I kind of agree with that because uh, I'm not a super huge fan of the blues at this point. Uh, I kind of just like the reds and yellows myself. And trust me, I've played a lot. I've played a lot of Kasai for the past two weeks. Uh, these are all decks that I've <laughs> built for Kasai. I probably should just stick with one like, and just play that into the ground, but that's not how I like to do things when a set comes out. But yes, only including that many uh, Outland Skirmishes, and uh, I feel pretty solid about that, plus Spoils of War for Copper Generation. And the other thing I look at, uh, besides like some cheeky nourishing emptinesses and some fates and some sinks, are the attack reaction inclusions. Three blade flurry, check. Three in the swing, check. Some number of iron song response. And then uh, the, the card that I've really come on to pretty heavily is Stroke of Foresight. In place of this, I had cut the deck because it lets you cycle your arsenal. But Stroke of Foresight starting to uh, show up and show out just because Reprise does the same thing. And it can be any card. And then the other point of contention right now is whether or not you're playing three cash-ins or no cash-ins or two cash-ins or however many cash-ins you're playing. And then how many number of raised in army as well. And if I had to guess, I'm going to probably guess that this is a sideboard card in this matchup, or sorry, in most uh, matchups, whether or not you bring it in. And uh, other sideboard cards uh, probably include commanding performance, how many of these fates and sinks you want to bring in, so on and so forth. But this is a more aggressive leaning, slightly aggressive leaning list uh, for Kasai. And it took Andre all the way to second place uh, in the old battle hardened. PTI there, and congratulations to him. But there's another list 
as well that takes things in a slightly different way. Let's pop over to that list. So here is the other battle hardened top eight list. And this list in some respects looks pretty similar, pretty similar. I should say equipment loadout minus the uh, crown of Providence for crown of dominion, uh, which I've been on for the past maybe week or so. And I've been liking it a lot because it starts you with that gold token. Uh, this one does not run the rainbow slice and dice. It's only running the one that's basically a zero for four, which uh, is pretty fun. It does include one of my favorite cards in this uh, entire hero pool, which is take it on the chin to create an agility token. Absolutely love that card. Think that card's incredible. And this one definitely playing a little bit more defensively. It has more blues. It has 18 blues, far less yellows. So we're not activating the um, hero power of Kasai as much with this many, or I should say this few yellows. Uh, and it's playing cards like that all you've got. And part of Fiendal is not something you saw on the previous list. And this allows you to play for a longer game and pitch this to gain that life back playing more defensively. Also has a nice little uh, blue overpower, which is just super solid. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, definitely a, po a point of contention in Discord uh, conversations. Uh, but if you're looking at the, uh, the loadout here in the inventory, if you will, Iron Song Pride is something that I've wanted to try, but I've always cut before I've actually run it into a list. And uh, maybe I should give it more of a fair shake, but uh, Springboard Somersault as well, along with the, uh, that all you got, making for some yellow defense reactions that can feed your graveyard to try and get uh, this uh, power online. And I think this is a more defensive take, a more controlling take on the hero. Uh, one thing I do want to consider, though, when before we jump away from this list and talk about the next hero, is how many go against this list has. We've got 3, 6, 9, 12. We've got 15, 18, 21. Looks like 21-ish go again, unless I'm missing. You can technically count these taken on the chins as well. So 24 total uh, feels really good in general. Uh, and I, I'm a big fan of the old Hot Streak inclusion. I have actually started just main boarding Hot Streak and Centauri Saber at this point. It has just become my, uh, my two go-tos on the blades. But congratulations to both players for hitting top eight with a brand new hero that not a lot of people you know said was uh, you know had a lot going for her in this meta in comparison to other heroes i'm super excited to see them uh, take it to the top eights and i want to see more people doing so so let's talk about another hero that came out of heavy hitters and came out of nowhere let's jump over to victor because victor took down the battle hardened in manila in blitz immediately got just points in the format which is hilarious and super cool so this is the list that victor uh won with and justin chu took it is it chu is it i'm sorry justin i apologies correct me in a comment um please let me uh know how to best pronounce your name because that is a pet peeve of mine me mispronouncing people's names makes me feel horrible so i apologize but uh justin picked up the win here and uh did so with orum aegis civic steps gauntlets of iron will tech plating and the old Miller's Grindstone. And then looking at the build, and this feels very, very solid and very similar to what you might see any sort of like mid-range defensive build of a Guardian could be playing. We've got solid like versions of uh, four cost attacks. We've got choke slams, debilitates, uh, all at four cost. We have a disable at five cost. And then we kind of ramp up from there. But the main like swinging points being four cost attacks are very indicative of us leaning into the tech plating into a blue playing choke slam for very efficient lines of play that basically just put your opponent on a clock and make them have to make hard decisions. And we can play defensively off of cards like test of strength, which with our hero ability just pop absolutely off because when this defends you clash and if you win the clash you create a gold token and in doing so you draw a card replacing the test of strength with with a another card so you've basically blocked for four and replaced that card with most likely a three block in your hand that is an incredibly powerful effect and once you've done this cycle enough of efficient blocking and playing out some like very persistent damage you can start playing things like golden sun or macho grande with dominate or a big rouse into another attack turn these are the power plays that Victor has available to him. Uh, and then rounding out the list, I would imagine these red unmovables are in the arsenal. Or sorry, not arsenal. <laughs> well, they might be in the arsenal. Uh, but these red unmovables are in the uh, inventory, if you will, because it's a 42-card deck. And in doing so, you drop your numbers 
counts to a 16 and 22 respectively. That feels pretty good. And uh, just expertly piloted, I would imagine, uh, to the top. I didn't get to watch much of the uh, Battle Hardened, but I'm going to plan on uh, going back this week and watching it. But congratulations, Justin, for putting Victor on the map in his first weekend being here in the game. Heavy hitters releasing and Victor saying, yeah, let's win this. Uh, let's win this entire tournament. That's pretty cool. And that's not the only hero that won an entire tournament on release weekend because Yuki Lee Bender took down the Battle Hardened uh, in Hartford on none other than Ko, And this is Yuki's list. She piloted this list to the top. And uh, if you've messed around at all with uh, Ko, there's gonna be a lot of very similar and kind of like good feeling things to this list. I think your biggest kind of slam dunk windmill slam cards in this hero are Bear Fangs, are Swing Big, are Wild Ride, and in particular, I'm a big fan now of Pack Hunt, just like in Reinar and Days of Old, and uh, Savage Feast. Savage Feast became very good uh, when we started having the ability to generate multiple action points. And now that we can easily create action points off of Agile Windup discards, uh, yeah, Savage Feast is in for the long haul because that card is quite good. But the cool thing about this list in particular is that we've cut some of the, um, you know, like, I, I guess more aggressive inclusions of like yellow versions of Bear Fangs, yellow versions of Wild Ride, and even, um, what's the, uh, what's the card I'm blanking on? Pulping. We've cut like big, ver like large rainbow versions of pulping. Like you can see the reds are down here in the uh, sideboard, but overall we have this core that is good at blocking and good at doing what it does. And that's playing like Blood Rush Bellows, powerful discard turns off of the uh, KO effect, giving you might tokens and playing just above rate attacks. It gives you this core package you can always lean back on. And then you go through and splash in the attacks or the uh, you know effects that you want to uh, kind of use to build out the rest of your deck into particular matchups. So Assault and Battery creates you agility tokens. Cast Bones is one of those power plays that can just throw down and give you six uh, mites and one agility token. Clash of Agility into like Warriors or Ninjas is like a shoe in win. Like literally this card is just a defend, gain an agility token. And KO is so much better with agility tokens. It's not even funny. I'm a huge fan of Runner Runner and I loved seeing this included in the deck as well because this is actually in my version of KO. Uh, I think it's a, a just a fantastic card for creating an agility token and sending uh, just the, the turn into overdrive one turn after another and sin packing. I'm honestly surprised to see this uh, in a in the sideboard instead of in the main board, uh, but it's a it's a really solid card and, and almost, in my opinion, a super like windmill slam auto include just being super good into basically the field that wants to arsenal. Like if your opponent doesn't ever plan on arsenaling, then it's just a three for six, which is a below rate. So perhaps that's why it's in the old arsenal. But this is such a cool list and uh, I love this. Maybe on the uh, on the skull crack. I think this is actually a card. First of all, I did include in my list. Second of all, I think that it's going to make it into more lists because it allows you the extra point of resource, the extra energy that you can tuck in a claw in between two like big attacks. After you do the discard and uh, draw or the draw and discard effect off of any of these things like Wild Ride or Bear Fangs with an agility. Uh, you have one extra resource maybe um, based on ratios. You can tuck in a Mandible Claw if you just end up lucking out into Skullcrack. So that's something I would see moving into the uh, deck list. But congratulations to Yuki for taking KO to the top of the event and getting KO his first living legend points on like day two of the set being released. How crazy is it that we've had multiple sets in the past and yet this set has just come in and just slammed down multiple heroes in the uh, in the playable, not super broken, but definitely very good tier to be able to take in a new meta and just come out of nowhere with it. I think it's so cool. This has me so excited to play more heavy hitters and I may be sniffly and maybe a little feverish 
So tell me in a comment below if I'm just way off base. And if you enjoy these recap type videos where we break down deck lists, make the number go slightly higher. Ah, oh, heck, I did this entire recording without updating that number. Fixed it, we did it. So if you want that number to go slightly higher, um, it would be really exciting. When we hit 18,000 subscribers, we're gonna have a fun giveaway stream where we open up old packs of flesh and blood. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Boop.